Hi, hello, what's happening? Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Ense Ufat, uh, CEO of the New Georgia Project. Um, we are probably best known as a large scale voter engagement organization um, that uh, much of the press uh, that is um, generated about the New Georgia Project and its work uh, is about the over 500,000 young people and people of color that we've registered to vote in all 159 of Georgia's counties uh, with a goal of registering a million new voters by the end of our first decade. And we're more than halfway there. Um, but little known fact um, that we want to make a well-known fact um, is that actually uh, that our civic engagement work and our voter registration work is all designed uh, to one, build the power that we need to fight for justice and equality uh, in all of our communities uh, to build political power and to organize the grassroots. That voting and all of the voting work that we do is in service of the kinds of communities that we want to live in and that our families deserve to live in, that we want to move from just surviving to thriving. And so in 2021, um, we've gotten very serious about gaming. Uh, we've gotten very serious about play, uh, if you will, and gaming and games as a tool uh, to educate people people about how government works, how elections work, and how they can bring about the change that they want to see. That um, while there's a lot of like high-minded rhetoric about democracy and elections, the truth is it's still really, really difficult to evaluate candidates, to learn where they stand on the issues that young people care about, um, and to, again, demystify the process. And so uh, knowing what we know about how people learn, um, building video games and getting into people's phones has become a huge priority for for us. Um, there's an, there was an election yesterday in Georgia. And so while the whole world is talking about the 2022 elections, what we know is that there are about 1,500 uh, municipal elections that are happening in Georgia in 2021. So we're talking about school board races and city council races and mayor's races and all of these things matter that while there's a lot of time, attention and money that's spent on presidential elections that it is quite frankly, uh, municipal leaders uh, who by law are required to live in the communities that we're in um, and that we often find it much easier to hold accountable and bring about the change that we wanna see. So um, as a core sort of way that we do our work, right? So obviously boots on the ground. Um, like I said, we've registered half a million voters. Um, there was a runoff election in Georgia on January 5th in 2021, um, immediately nine weeks after the November presidential election. And in that time, we knocked on 2 million doors, made about 7 million phone calls, sent about 10 million text messages messages just to Georgians, reminding them about how important it is for them to vote. Um, and so like the sort of community organizing um, is one of the sort of tactics uh, that we use to bring about the change that we see and to organize the grassroots and to move people for action. Um, the second tactic that we use is to do a lot of research. Um, just because we are young people led, um, Gen Z and millennials, um, just because we're led by people of color, uh, and just because we're led by gamers, doesn't automatically make us experts in the politics of those communities. And it doesn't automatically make us experts in how to move people to action that we are regularly and constantly researching and studying and testing tactics and testing their effectiveness. And so as we began to dip our toe into the waters of, 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 of building our own video games and also understanding um, what the culture is and how communities are built around particular games, um, we started to learn a couple of things. And one, um, that 60% of Americans play video games daily, um, that 45% of gamers are women over 80%, 83% of Black teenagers uh, 
consider themselves gamers play video games compared to 71% of white teenagers and 69% of Latinx teenagers. And so, um, you know, when some of the older, uh, more established leaders in our organizations thought that um, us investing in building our own video games and hosting Madden tournaments uh, and hosting game jams with game, Games for Change might seem like an opportunity to just like have some fun uh, and play games um, that our research has shown us that this is an effective way uh, to not only get into people's phones, um, but to also do some high quality, impactful, uh, popular education, and again, moving people to action. Um, and so we don't take it, we, again, we're very serious about play uh, at the New Georgia Project and in this new version, um, this new millennial version of the civil rights um, movement. So uh, before we launched and had our first game jam in 2019, uh, we would host hackathons uh, where, you know, we would bring developers and um, designers, but also, uh, you know, the millions of people of color um, that have been purged from Georgia's voter rolls, uh, the folks from who work in the Secretary of State's office, folks who run elections in our county board's office, and we would bring um, um, folks who run elections, voters, activists, voting rights lawyers, civil rights lawyers, uh, esports players, uh, and put them all in a room for a weekend to come up with ideas for apps uh, and things that would help again, to demystify how campaigns and elections work, to demystify how government works, and to remove barriers to participation so that people know how, uh, how they can be uh, the change that we seek or how they can bring about the change that we seek. So um, adoption of our apps was consistent but slow. Um, and what we found is that on election day, people would absolutely open up our app to get all of the information about candidates and elections, but those folks were already going to vote. Um, and what we want to do is make sure that we are bringing in a new generation of people um, who understand the importance of elections um, and don't wait to election day uh, to research candidates or to know that, oh, it's election day. Um, and so that is when uh, we started thinking about games, that casual gaming. Um, I think that a lot of our leaders, again, thought about just consoles. Um, and so they're not thinking about video games or not thinking about the fact that, um, you know, Candy Crush uh, and uh, Microsoft Solitaire are literally uh, some of the most subscribed to games period in the history of video games. And that these casual games, these puzzle games, these free games that are in people's phones um, are also like a legitimate part um, of the gaming ecosystem um, and was an interesting and really good place for us to start to think about um, what is the casual way um, that we maintain regular conversations with young people and people of color about participating in our elections. So then we head into 2020. At the beginning of the year, we had big, bold, ambitious plans. We were going to register 100,000 new people to vote uh, all across the state of Georgia. We were going to have, um, you know, uh, we were going to do escape rooms. Uh, we were going to go to music festivals and county fairs, judge the size of people's pigs, uh, and register folks to vote but then the pandemic happened um, and we all went into our homes uh, and started working virtually. Uh, but just because uh, our leaders had not quite figured out um, how to get the world back open safely didn't mean that our grassroots organizing, our electoral organizing and our community organizing had to stop. So while we weren't able to go to all of the dorm move in and move out days that we intended, we were going to find our folks um, and figure out how to continue to build community. Um, and we knew that we weren't just going to hit people with talking points. We knew that like a PowerPoint presentation wasn't going to bring people in to the movement for Black Lives, wasn't going to bring people in to the New Georgia Project and the voting, uh, voting work that we do. 
And so um, because we've registered a, about, um, I think, uh, 150,000 people who were born after the year 2000, um, one of our questions to um, high school guidance counselors, to principals, um, to parents, were, where are your 17-year-olds? Um, how are folks building community? Um, and that's when we learned about Twitch. Um, Twitch is an you know, awesome platform, uh, video platform where um, uh, there are lots of gamers of all races and ages and um, skill levels who are building community um, and again participating in a community of gamers and we wanted to be there. Again, it is our ambition to have no daylight uh, pass between our organizations and the communities that we organize with. And so we wanted to reach out and be in community with folks who were born in 2002 and who were headed into voting in their first presidential election. And it was really, really important that we found out how people were maintaining community. Um, uh, throughout the pandemic. So we got a Twitch page uh, and started hosting game nights and hosting conversations, uh, building, reaching out to esports players, uh, young people and people who, again, had lots of questions. Um, our research also showed us that 75% of folks in, um, of Gen Zers got their information about um, upcoming elections from um, social media. So from Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, et cetera. Um, and the other thing that we know is that um, we are living through uh, an unprecedented age of misinformation and disinformation where bad actors, both foreign and domestic, have been um, sort of poisoning the information wells about um, things that are provable, about COVID, about the COVID vaccines, um, about elections, about absentee ballots, that there are people who want folks to withdraw from the system and say, this doesn't matter. Um, that all the parties are the same, uh, that my vote doesn't matter. Um, and that is not true at all. And so in addition to working to build community, it also was really important that as uh, that we establish ourselves as trusted messengers and that we insert ourselves um, and make sure that we can get high quality information that people can rely on that is factual uh, and uh, as a way to combat misinformation and disinformation. What we used to do was when we found uh, something that was obviously wrong. So like the election is November 4th and someone would post like, make sure you show up and vote on November 5th. Uh, and what we used to do is retweet and be like, this is a lie. Um, and what we learned very quickly is that the algorithm doesn't care about our analysis and that our goal is to make sure that not only are we um, being seen as trusted messengers and that we are competing uh, for hearts and minds and eyeballs and ears and attention, um, but that we are also in a community with influencers um, and people who uh, have a, a circle of influence themselves. Um, and so what that meant uh, was that, uh, okay, we couldn't go to county fairs. We couldn't go to dorm move in and move out days. And so we started to host events on Twitch. Our first big event besides like, you know, gaming tournaments um, was what we call Twitch the Vote. Uh, we hosted Twitch the Vote on National Voter Registration Day. Um, and again, uh, we ended up registering 9,000 people to vote in one single day, making up for a lot of the events that we couldn't do when we weren't able to go outside. Um, and so with so much success, um, so many people seeing New Georgia Project as a place where they can get information that they can trust and that they can rely on, of course, we decided to run it back. Right, so Twitch the Vote 2 uh, for us actually happened on election day. Um, and there were uh, gaming tournaments, uh, there was live gameplay, uh, there were live performances. Dave East, who's a popular rapper, DJ Manny Fresh from New Orleans, um, DJ at a set. Uh, we had uh, messages from uh, Miss Tina Knowles, Beyonce's mom, uh, Dr. Mae Jameson, the first 
first Black woman to uh, travel space, who's also from the South, uh, and who also is passionate about young people and how we do popular education and how people are able to tap into their power um, and recognize that there's no Calvary coming and that the America that we want to build um, is it's going to be up to us. So we had half, an, uh, half a million unique uh, streamers, viewers on our Twitch The Vote um, on election day. What we also did was work with gamers and young people who were voting for the first time uh, to go live and live stream their experience to show people um, how easy it could be and that they should be out there joining us to do it. So we cannot and will not leave any tool on the table that's designed to make sure that we win, uh, that we win on politics, that we win um, on policy, that we win in building communities, that we win in um, developing leaders. Um, and again, that there is, um, I believe in organization, we believe in organization and that people should have an organizing home, uh, they should have a movement home, they should have a political home. Um, and so, we can't, um, we can not only be a trusted messenger, but we can be a resource. And um, we believe that our work to build video games um, will make this a possibility. So Shannon already shared the announcement. I'm so excited uh, about our game jam that we're hosting uh, at later this fall and the end of September. So, um, you know, individuals are allowed to participate. Uh, teams are allowed to participate. There'll be cash prizes. We are going to build games. We're going to get on people's computers. We're going to get in people's phones. We're going to get it on people's consoles um, so that it's not a secret about what we need to do to run for office, what we need to do in order to hold elected officials accountable, um, what we need to do, again, to have the schools, the workplaces, and the government that we deserve. So um, I just want you all to know that we are committed to organizing our communities wherever they are and whatever they need, um, and our power can only grow, um, and that we're willing to be creative and receptive and relentless about our mission. And so the Games for Change community uh, welcomed us right in, um, and I'm super excited about what the future holds, and I can't wait for you all to see what we build together. So when you get an opportunity, um, join us at newgeorgiaproject.org for more information uh, and go to Games for Change's website if you want additional information about how to sign yourself up or your team up for our 2021 Game Jam. Um, I'm going to be over on Hop In in the Imagine Q&A room. Uh, the link to that room is in the chat. Um, so if you want to follow up um, about how we uh, are bold and an aggress and aggressive with our human rights, our queer rights, our young people rights, our poor people's rights, our civil rights agenda, um, and all of the creative and interesting things that we hope to do with gaming and play uh, as we learn about how to build power uh, and then flex that power and then test that power uh, again and again and again. Join us over in the Imagine Q&A room. And once again, the link is in the chat. Uh, I appreciate you all. I thank you for your time. Uh, and I, I'll see you on Twitch. <laughs>